What's up guys, my name is Fran and welcome back. So today we're checking out the latest CPU from Intel. This is the seventh generation Kaby Lake Intel Core i7 7700K. So I promised myself over and over again, I wasn't gonna do this video and I possibly wasn't gonna do this review because I'm just like you guys. I watch YouTube videos and I read the internet and a lot of buzz around this processor is the fact that it's no faster than the Skylake equivalent. However, for the sake of content creation as well as science, I decided I have to make this video to at least attempt to debunk the theory that the 7700K is not that much faster than the 6700K. I'll also be throwing in the i5-6600K into the mix just so we have some more well-rounded videos. Results. Okay, so to test out the 7700K, I decided to tear apart my favorite gaming PC. His name is Wally. Okay, so currently, as configured, Wally is sporting an EVGA Stinger Z170 motherboard, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 Corsair Vengeance LED memory, dual Samsung 850 Evo drive. And while the CPU will vary based on the testing, they'll all be cooled by the Corsair H100i CPU closed loop water cooler. Okay, so now at this time, let's jump into those benchmarks. Okay, so at this point, you've seen the numbers, I've seen the numbers, let's talk about them. So the 7700K Intel Crappy Lake processor is definitely faster than the 6700K Skylake processor, but by how much? Looking at the benchmarking results, according to my calculations, it seems like it's faster by about 5-6%. to Now the 7700K retails for about $350. So if you look at it, if you think $350 is worth 5-6% to of a performance increase, then more power to you. But here's the way I view it. Looking at eBay at the time of recording this video, a used 6700K goes for about $270 to about $300. So the way I view it, the upgrade actually costs you about $50. So if you think $50 is worth a 5-6% to performance increase and potential higher overclocks than you get on a 6700K, then once again, I say more power to you. In my opinion, 50 bucks ain't that bad. But I think the Intel Krabby Lake processor is a part of a larger problem here. For the last couple of generations, all we've seen are these 5-6% to performance increases. I mean, we have seen some die strengths and we have seen lower TDP, but this more so benefits the mobile laptop market than the actual desktop enthusiast market. I think Intel's gotten a little bit too comfortable with the lack of competition coming out of other competitors, such as AMD or even ARM. My hope is that Zen, or rather Ryzen, is a really competitive product. These last couple of generations of Intel CPUs actually got me thinking. What if Intel's keeping something up their sleeves? What if they've got this new CPU architecture that they've been holding off on because they really haven't had any competition? What if they've been waiting for AMD to release something like Zen, which is actually competitive with their current products, and they can pull out their trump card, no pun intended, and release something so they don't end up like when AMD released the FX series of processors and they went 64-bit? I mean, it's actually a lot to think about. Now, while I do apologize for my rants and conspiracy theories, what I'll say is this. The Intel Core i7 7700K is a pretty great processor. However, if you are on the market and looking for a new CPU or even doing a new build, personally, I would just wait a little bit longer. AMD Ryzen is just around the corner and I'm pretty sure there's gonna be some exciting stuff coming out of AMD at a cheaper price. If not, Intel hopefully would definitely be dropping something that maybe will crush Ryzen and we'll see even more competition in this marketplace. And if you're currently sporting a 6700K Skylake processor, once again, I definitely think you should wait as well. I mean, there's not enough of a performance increase to justify this purchase. However, if you just can't wait, you've seen the numbers, there is definitely some performance increases there, and hopefully that's good enough and worth your money. Well, either way, that's all I have to say about that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Once again, sorry about my rants. Uh, if you have any questions about this processor or anything tech related at all, do me a favor, leave them in the comment section below. Also, while you're down there, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't don't forget to subscribe. Once again, my name is Fran. Thanks so much for checking out this video and hopefully I see you guys in the next one.